Hello, today I'm sharing some of my most used Sephora products that I reach for all the time and think are worth grabbing during the Sephora savings event. And now all Beauty Insider members can shop and save as many times as you want through April 15th. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Let's go ahead and get into these beauty staples I use and reach for all the time and think you'll love as much as I do. This is my third Sephora savings event video. Every time it rolls around, I do a few different videos with different topics and have so much fun putting them together for you. If you haven't seen the others or want some reminders of what I recommend, I'll have them linked for you. My next will be my haul, so stay tuned for that. The code for all tiers is yay save. And in addition to your individual tier savings, all Sephora collection products are 30% off through April 15th when the Sephora savings event ends and all beauty and Insider members get free shipping on all orders. It's free to join to access the Sephora savings event. It's not too late. So if you're not a Beauty Insider member and you want more details or you want to join, I have a link down in my description box so you can check it out. I also have specific dates, codes, percentages, and all the products I'm sharing with you today. I always have so many products I can share with you in these videos. It's hard to narrow things down and to figure out which products to put in which video. There are a couple in this one that could easily have fit in my other two and vice versa, but I just place them the best I can because I don't like to duplicate from video to video. I'm excited to partner yet again with Sephora for today's video. I had a lot of fun putting it together and I'm going to start with two foundations I've been reaching for a ton. I've been mixing them together and loving the result too. So the first is Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte. I wear shade 230 and Guerlain Terracotta Latent foundation. I wear 2.5 in. I do tons of foundation reviews here on my channel and have full reviews on both of these if you want to see how they apply and what they look like on my skin and how they wear multiple days. So I'm turning 49 this year. I have combination skin that is normal and can be dry around the perimeter, but I get some shine in my T-zone. I also live in New Orleans where it is hot. It is humid the majority of the year. So I always look for foundations that are going to hold up in tough weather conditions. And both of these do, even though they're very different foundations. So Guerlain gives a very natural skin-like finish. It diffuses pores and just makes your skin look flawless. It's buildable from light medium to medium full coverage and gives a stunning luminous matte finish, which sounds kind contradictory, but if you can see the finish on my face right now, it's a tad more luminous than this. I have these two mixed today on my face. Sometimes luminous foundations can make me a bit shiny, a bit greasy as the day goes on. This never does that and it holds up really well. Fenty Soft Matte is buildable from medium to full coverage. It applies really quickly. It also blurs pores and gives a soft matte diffused finish that looks natural. It never looks cakey. It never looks heavy and it it lasts all day and I love the result of mixing these two together because I kind of get the best of both worlds. A natural soft matte yet luminous finish that lasts beautifully throughout the day. I don't get shiny and I can really kind of customize my coverage. There are other foundations that I reach for quite a bit. I have shared some of those in my previous videos already and I did repurchase one. You'll see that in my haul but I just I've really been loving both of these so much. When it comes to under eye concealers, I'm extremely picky. I have dark circles and dryness and texture. I find many hydrating creamy concealers don't provide enough coverage for my discoloration, even with corrector underneath. And a lot of the ones that do cover enough don't hydrate enough. And that is why I love Tower 28 Swipe All Over Hydrating Serum Concealer. I loved this when I first tested it and I reach for it more than any other concealer I own because it's so versatile for any occasion. It's hydrating, creamy, smoothing, and covers really nicely. I can wear it by itself if I do want medium coverage, which is very rare, or I can layer it over itself at my darkest spots in my under eye hollows and at the outer corners, or I can layer it over corrector like I normally do and get medium full coverage that looks natural and wears well all day. I wear the shade DTLA, by the way. It has high 
hyaluronic acid that hydrates and smooths. It also has centella that soothes and calms. It's also got lysine that supports collagen production and repairs and prevents dryness. It always blends out easily. It's weightless. It wears beautifully throughout the day. There is nothing, in my opinion, not to like about this concealer. I do have other concealers that I reach for for various occasions, various reasons, and really enjoy. But on a day-to-day -day basis for a no-fail concealer that won't let me down, this is the one I grab. Let's talk about what's on my lips. I fell in serious love with Kosas Wet Stick the first time I tried it. I bought it in the shade Malibu, which is what I'm wearing right now. Now, yesterday when I was originally gonna film this video, I was wearing Heat Wave. I have swatches of all of them for you so you can see what each shade looks like. Now, the reason why I fell in love with this formula is because it's a little bit different from other similar types of products that are out there. It has more pigment that lasts longer while still feeling creamy and it also doesn't smush down. So this is one of those hybrid lip balm gloss nourishing products that you know everybody seems to be coming out with but a lot of them you have to be really careful when you apply them because they kind of squish down and they're kind of goopy. This one isn't plus it has peptides and ceramides, it has squalane, hyaluronic acid, all kinds of good ingredients that condition your lips, smooth, hydrate, and give nice shine and pigmentation. I just love everything that these do for my lips. I pretty much just make sure that there is one of these in my purse at all times. We talked about what's on my lips, so let's go ahead and talk about what's on my eyes, which is the new Makeup by Mario Master Mattes The Neutrals palette. Now he launched this recently to go along with his original Master Mattes palette. This, the original, has been one of my most reached for palettes for a while because I reach for it on a day-to-day -day basis for various reasons. Sometimes it's to get a complete matte eye look. Other times it's to reach for individual shades. Even when I'm using other palettes or doing a one and done look, sometimes I just want a crease or transition shade, or sometimes I'll just dip into this shade if I need a matte highlight for my brow bone or my inner corner. And these two shades right here, these deep shades are great to line with. I line with eyeshadow pretty frequently and pull this out a lot to use these as eyeliner, dry or wet. It doesn't matter. I had no idea how much I was going to use this when I initially bought it because I was wasn't wearing a ton of all matte looks at the time. I am doing that more now, but I do reach for it for other occasions, even when I'm wearing shimmers and just need a matte here and there. So I had to grab this when it launched just to see the differences. The quality is exactly the same. I mean, these mattes are so blendable and easy to work with. You can actually apply your eyeshadow after you do your foundation, after you do your concealer. And as long as you tap your brush off first, as with any eyeshadow, you don't have a ton of fallout everywhere. It's nice. So basically, no matter what your preference is at this point, I think one of these can work for you. If you prefer neutrals, this one is great. The quality is fantastic. It wears well throughout the day. If you like warmer shades like I do, you'll probably reach for this one more. I like doing a cooler eye look on occasion like I did today, but I'm more of a, a warm neutrals girl. So for me personally, this one will be the one I continue to reach for the most day in and day out. Out, but I'm glad I have this one. Either way, I think having an all matte palette in your life is a great thing. And I mean, it's something I reach for all the time. Okay, people seem to really love or really hate this next product. Those of us that love it, swear by it. And people who don't, I think we're maybe expecting something else or it could be an application issue. I don't know. All I know is that I reach for Merit Solo Shadow, specifically in the shade Vachetta, multiple times a week. It's one of the quickest, easiest, one and done eyeshadows I've ever used and it wears well all day without creasing. Okay, so how I apply it, I swirl my finger in it. You only need a small amount. A little goes a long way. So I just start tap blending it out on my eyelid. And as I get towards my crease, I just kind of swipe it up and out so it diffuses it out. You can also apply this with a brush. There is a brush that came with it, but I just find it so easy to blend out with my finger. Now, if you find that you've applied it that way and you've worn it and it does crease, just apply it over an eyeshadow primer.
primer, just don't set that eyeshadow primer first because it's a cream. You want to apply it directly over the eyeshadow primer, not over powder. It conceals discoloration, veins, imperfections, and is just a simple one and done eyeshadow. I usually apply it a little bit of eyeliner, some mascara, and I'm done. I do have other shades. This is just my most reached for neutral, easy to wear, goes with everything shade. With the amount of heat and humidity that we have here, I don't know how I've gone this long without discovering this setting spray. I've already reached for it a ton. I know when we're in the dead of summer here, this is what I'm going to be reaching for. This is the one size on till dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. Now I know it says mattifying, but it's not really mattifying the way you're thinking it might be. Now the first thing that I love about it is the aerosol cloud-like lightweight mist. My face isn't all wet after I spray it. I don't have to fan my face and wait for it to dry. It seems to kind of meld my makeup together. And by mattifying, what it does for me anyway, is it just doesn't change the finish of my makeup. So if my makeup is matte that day, then it leaves it that way. But if I have more of a luminous finish, it leaves it that way. It doesn't turn it into some kind of a matte finish. It also doesn't leave my face feeling sticky or dry and tight like you might think it was. I, I don't feel it, but it does keep my makeup on all day long. I love this stuff. I've been reaching for it a ton and I just don't see being without it, especially not during the warm and hot months. Seriously, how many times have I mentioned the Ola Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment since I discovered it a couple months ago? I have strawberry sorbet and I just love, love, love the natural strawberry scent it has. It doesn't smell synthetic. It's just so good. It tastes good. It smells good. The applicator is so comfortable. It looks like it's going to have some pigment to it when you see it swatched on the back of my hand, but I find it, it's pretty sheer and just has such a lovely texture to it. Sometimes I apply it in the morning, sometimes at night, sometimes before I do my makeup. It doesn't really matter. Now I'm thinking I might want to pick another one up because I do reach for this so much. Maybe I'll get one of the other scents that they have or flavors. Should I say flavors? This has lip specific peptides in it to help make your lips look more defined and fuller, which is something I love so much about the Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm. It also has really nice ingredients to soothe and nourish and provide intense moisture and visibly soften your lips, as well as counteract volume loss and help restore bounce to your lips. All of those things are so impressive, combined with the fact that it's just a, a pleasure to use with a nice sensory experience. This has become my most used, my most reached for lip balm. And as I'm sitting here holding it, I'm realizing I should probably order another one before the Sephora savings event ends. You know, I talk about concealer a lot here, but it's usually under eye concealer. I review them regularly, but NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer is an unsung hero that I use almost daily in some way, and it rarely gets talked about. So I'm in shade Canel, and I mean, you can see this has had some use. I have a backup that I should probably pull out because this is probably getting old. A little goes a long way. I don't think that I'll ever be able to use one of these up by the time it needs to be replaced. So the shade Canel is great for concealing various spots on my face, even my chest sometimes, my neck. Sometimes I get a little rashy on my neck. I don't know what that's about, but it works well for my light, medium, neutral, leaning, warm skin tone. So even if I have liquid concealers that work great under my eyes, this is usually what I reach for, for those other areas, because it does have a soft matte finish that blends into my skin quickly and easily. It conceals fully and it lasts beautifully throughout the day. This is much too drying for my under eye area. It may work well for you if you have oily under eyes, mine are dry, but for a face concealer, I just, I think it's perfect. This has been a staple for me for a long time. It lives in my vanity. I reach for it multiple times a week and it definitely needs a mention. Like I said, this will last forever.
I was originally going to film this video yesterday. Some things got in the way. It didn't end up happening. But as I was getting ready, I realized I had to include both of these in this video because I reach for one or both of them in some way every single day. So this is a twofer. I have to talk about both of them together and you'll see why. I do not have naturally straight hair. In order to look presentable, I have to heat style it. So no matter if I'm styling my hair curly or wavy, as soon as I pull my hair dryer out to turn it on, I also heat up my GHD Platinum Styler. It only takes 30 seconds to heat up. I don't know why I turn it on right at that moment. That's just what I do. I don't have to worry about temperature settings. It's already set to the perfect temperature to smooth my hair and do what it needs to do, but without damaging my hair. Now, whether I'm doing my hair straight or curly, I always do this little root lift technique at the top because my hair is pretty fine and flat. So that's what I use this for every time I style my hair. I also use it to get the little bends right at the front of my hair that are just going in every direction. Now that I have bangs, I also use it for my bangs. Now the other tool is this oval shaped GHD curling iron. Now there are a couple of reasons why I've been reaching for this so much. This oval shape is really unique. With the new bangs, sometimes the under layer of my bangs wants to do weird things and it kind of wants to stick out and I can take the flat wide side and kind of press it. Whereas I can't really do that here because the flat side is on the inside, but I can press this and gently against my hair, not my scalp and sort of tame and redirect my bangs and get them to go where I need them to go. But anytime you see me with these tousled natural looking waves, this is more than likely what I've used. It also heats up in 30 seconds. It's very quick and easy. I just wrap a section of hair around it, hold it for a few seconds and let it go. I do that around my whole head and then I put in some texture spray and I'm good to go. If some areas look a little bit too curly, I can then take out my trusty flat iron and just clamp it over those areas very lightly and it looks a little bit more natural. So these two tools get used a lot. I mean, I use several tools pretty regularly, but this one is used every single day for something. And this one is used several times a week. So they definitely needed to be in this video. I was going to share this in my haul, my next video, because I just bought a full size. But if you're looking for a quick Sephora collection product recommendation, since their products are 30% off for all tiers, this was sitting here amongst my products. And so I did order a full size of the Love the Lift Mascara. I mentioned this in a video a while back. I really enjoyed it for everyday length and volume. It's got this curved wand. Now I do always curl my lashes and this just gives them a nice flare. It doesn't flake. It doesn't smudge. So if you're looking for a nicely priced mascara, you may want to check this one out. It is a wet formula, so I prefer it a couple weeks after it's been opened. And I see that they've launched a waterproof version too that I'm kind of wanting to check out. So I may actually grab that too. I shared a couple other Sephora collection product recommendations in my other Sephora videos I've already done, which you can catch here along with my past Sephora recommendations videos. I always stand by those recommendations too. I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss my haul or any upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.